Hello everyone, thank you so much for helping on. It's another session for y'all. Um, my name is Ryan Tumanyema. I'm a fourth year radiography student based in Nigeria and um, I'm also a medical writer and um, I'm also a YouTube content creator. So today I have an amazing personality. She's a Nigerian based in the US and um, her name is Ruth. She's studying neuroscience at Bowdoin College. Um, hey Ruth, could you talk us through about your journey and who you are as well? Hi everyone, it's lovely to be here. My name is Ruth Olujabi and as Ransom said, I am a Nigerian studying in the US. I'm studying neuroscience. I am a final year student, um, which means I'm going into my fourth year in a few months. I came to the US in 2021 and when I came to the US, I knew I wanted to study neuroscience because I want to go on to medical school eventually. So in the US, you don't, for those who don't know, you don't go on to medical school immediately right after secondary school or high school, depending on what you call it in your country. You first do your undergraduate degree and then go on to the to medical school. And so neuroscience is my undergraduate degree before I go into med school um, in a few years from now, depending on when that is exactly. So um, I schooled in Lagos, Nigeria. That's where I went to school for both high school or secondary school, however you call it, um, junior secondary school, elementary school, primary school. I did all of my education in Nigeria. So I was born and bred in Nigeria and I'm very much still connected to home. But I knew that I wanted to study outside Nigeria when I was growing up because I just felt that it would give me a better exposure. And so all of my time in, in secondary school, especially senior secondary school or high school, I worked towards studying in Nigeria. I was open to opportunities. I paid attention to other people, even people who were not around me who were traveling abroad because I didn't have a lot of people around me who had traveled to study in the US, just a few people. So I paid attention. I watched the videos and I kept the dream alive that I really did want to study outside Nigeria. I didn't know if it would be, if it would be the US or the UK or Canada, but I knew I wanted to study outside Nigeria because I knew that it would give me a lot of exposure. And so I got to North Education USA in the final year of secondary school. I got to North Education USA. I joined them right after I graduated from secondary school. In fact, right after I left high school. And then I took two gap years where I got exposure on what it means to apply to schools in the US. And then I applied, I got into Bowdoin, and now I'm here. Wow. You know, um, that was an amazing introduction. And thank you so much for talking us through about your journey right from Nigeria down to the US. And I believe that um, the audience as well wanting to, you know, travel abroad, you know, Education USA is also an amazing organization that can help you as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, Ruth, we have a couple of questions for you to answer. You ready? All right, the first question for you is, what really inspired you to serve as Tanyashian Global President? Before you answer the question, talk us through about, you know, the organization called Tanyashian HQs, right? Mm -hmm. talk us okay, thank you. That's a good question. So T Nation is an organization that works to support young people to be leaders and to be change makers in different different spheres. And so I was drawn to Teen Nation because I was just blown by how Teen Nation was building a community of change makers who were thriving in climate activism, in gender-based violence activism, in youth employment, youth empowerment activism. And so that's essentially what the core of Teen Nation is, empowering young people to be leaders 
in different spheres of life, to be change makers and to be able to raise other leaders. And so in 2020, I got to hear of Teen Nation and I was working with an organization that was slightly connected to Teen Nation. And so as I got to hear more about Teen Nation, I was getting more and more involved in its vision and its mission. And then I joined Teen Nation as a young teen leader because then I was still a teenager. And so I, when I joined Teen Nation, I helped host events at Teen Nation. I started the Teen Health TV, which was then an Instagram live, although it's now it has morphed into something else, but it was then an Instagram live during the pandemic, where weekly I would come on and speak about different health topics. Today I might speak about exercise. Tomorrow I might speak about feeding. Next tomorrow I might speak about something else. So Teen Health TV was a place where I could channel my interest and my love for health and wellness and also get involved for Teen Nation. Another thing I did do with Teen Nation is the coalition against rape, Teen Nation coalition against rape. This was something very dear to me and I was helping with advocacy against rape, advocacy against sexual violence, advocacy against sexual assault. And so as I continue to work with Teen Nation in different capacities, in holding events and organizing events, in um, creating space for young people, I gained more and more experience. I continue to gain experience. And then later on in 2022, I was elected or selected as um, the incoming global president after our former um, global president Jefferson was um, exiting the role. Wow. That was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Ruth. And it's amazing what the organization is doing towards um, the youth, you know, empowerment, which is really, you know, needed in our society right now, which is an amazing stuff to do, you know, because I, I know about the organization way back, you know, because they are really, really, really doing a great job. And, you know, a lot of people also benefited like you as well which is an amazing stuff mm -hmm. so uh, kudos to your participation in you know in the sexual you know awareness you, you participated in which is an amazing stuff and um, yeah thank you so much for sharing that with us so the next question for you is how has the experience at Bowdoin college you know influenced you as a leader in your career tell us so coming to Bowdoin has been really transformative because I have learned not just what to think about, but how to think in general. So I have learned how to see a concept and think critically about it, how to push back against things that are not right, how to form my own thoughts and ideas for myself. and. All these things have been really critical in forming my leadership style or rather enhancing my leadership style. So when I, you know, I learned that, okay, as a leader, you should do X, Y, Z to those under you. This is how you foster a great community. When I learned that in different classrooms or through different settings, I was able to say, these things are things I think I can take up because they really suit my leadership style of compassion and suit my leadership style of empathy and community building. And so Bowdoin has given me a space to think critically, a space to, a space to explore, a space to be with, in community with people, a space to feel the burden of leadership a space to be creative, a space to help build other people. And I do that, for example, through my podcast, Blooming Daily. I do that through Residential Life, which is a job I have on campus. I do that through a club called Afri Africa Alliance, which I was the co-president of last year, but now I'm the current president. I do that through the Christian um, community I am a part of on campus. And so 
being at Bowdoin has helped me grow, has helped me think, and this has translated into how I lead, this has translated into how I interact with people, how I empathize with people, how I listen to people, how I respond to people, how I communicate. Being at Bowdoin has really shaped and refined many parts of me. You know, that was an amazing explanation to that question. Um, you know, because your, your college is an amazing college. It's not really easy to enter that college, you know, because I know how the application process is. It's really very hectic, you know, sometimes, um, and which is an amazing stuff that you, you know, scaled it through and you're involved in, you know, college doing incredible things. and. You know, thank you so much for also sharing your experiences at the college and how it's, you know, has influenced you mm -hmm. as a in your career, which is an amazing stuff. So before we move further to the next question, how do you, because I know being a neuroscience student, you know, what to do, you know, because neuroscience is basically about the brain, you know, is I can remember like, when I did near anatomy my, my third year, I know how we, we didn't go deeper in the brain stuff, but you know, we just did the segments, you know, about the brain or something like so tell us how do you balance all these equations, like all these roles, leadership, amazing roles you're handling with your studies and neuroscience? That's a really good question. I don't think it's just a good question. I think it's an important question and one that I often have to think about when I'm thinking about my priorities, when I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about the things that are taking my time, my attention, my energy. And so I think balancing is an interesting word because many times I don't feel like things are balanced. I have many times in the semester where I'm really stressed from school and so I can't do a few other things I want to do or times where I'm, I have to travel, I have to leave school for a few days to attend a conference um, for, for example, the Student National Medical Association because I am a member of the Student National Medical Association. So balance is a thing that I feel like doesn't happen all the time, but that's fine because at many points in our life, we have to prioritize some things over other things. And that can be called a form of balance in and of itself. So I would say that understanding my priorities at certain point in times is what helps me. Knowing that, for example, in this period of time, I really have to study because I have exams coming up. Or in this period of time, I'm going to have to leave school because I need to have attend this really important conference or event, only that I really need to record the podcast episode at this point because I, I love my podcast and I want to keep on putting out content. And so understanding at each point in time what's really important to me has been very helpful. Another thing is community. Because I'm someone who does a lot I'm so, and I'm someone who is prone to doing a lot, I need to be among a community of people who can, re one, Keep on encouraging me to do the things I do who can keep furling my fire, but also remind me when I am almost taking up too much at a um, particular point in time. I need people who can tell me, oh, Ruth, I, th I think that you're, you, you know, you have an exam coming up, but you're also doing this and you're also doing that. And do you really think that's sustainable? Do you really think you can do that? I really think you might need to drop one thing or drop that thing for this two weeks or for this one week community. And that community consists of my friends on campus, consists of staff on campus and even my siblings. So that's another thing that has helped me, community. Then another thing that I will say has helped me is trying to be disciplined and trying to stay on track with the things I have to do. I know that it's very easy to veer off, you know, you want to double in this, double in that. You want to spread thin. Again, I have a tendency to want to do everything at the same time, all the time. But then the discipline to say, no, Ruth, you really have to hold on with this thing until a later time because this other thing is more pressing and you need to put more effort into this 
important matter or you need to really just lock in to study for this really important exam and things like that. So discipline to know when to stay on track and not to veer off is something that has also helped me a lot. Well, I love the fact you, you mentioned about your, your siblings and community, which is sums up everything. Having people that tells you, you know, what to do at the right time and what not to do at the wrong time, which is an incredible stuff to do. And um, so thank you so much for sharing us how you balance those equations. You know, I, I call them, yeah. You know, and I believe you were meant to listen to other kind of students here, you know, watch the video. I guess you should learn how to have a com community, you know, if that's, I call it a supporting system. It could yeah. be your friend, your lecturer, it could be your family as well, you know, that guides you to the right path, you know, so you can't, you know, deviate in what you're doing, So which is an amazing stuff to do. So the next question for you, Ruth, is, is related to the podcast, right? So can you share some memories or, you know, lessons you've learned while appearing as a guest speaker or as a host on your podcast? Before that, talk us through about your podcast a little bit. Okay. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this, I am the host of Blooming Daily, which is a podcast on health and wellness. Blooming Daily is a podcast that seeks to help young people, or everyone in fact, but mostly young people to understand their health and wellness journeys. Through Blooming Daily, we speak about topics that are rarely spoken about or topics that are spoken about commonly, but from a different perspective. So for example, sometimes at Blooming Daily, we've had times where we've spoken about the the impact of our relationships on our health. You know, what does hair health mean? Or how can your overall health impact your hair health? Those are things we've spoken about on the show because those are things that people might not think about often. So that's essentially what Blooming Daily is, a health and wellness podcast that looks at health from different lenses and different perspectives because this is what makes a person healthy, not just um, only going to the hospital or not just eating, right? There's so many things that contribute to a person's health. And so before I speak about the lessons that I've learned, I would just quickly say I started doing Blooming Daily because I've always been interested in health and wellness. I am deeply concerned about quality health care. And so I have always wanted to speak about health and wellness. I want to help people think about your health. I want to say, okay, outside the hospital, how can we help people be more healthy, be more energized, be more well? And so that's why I said, I want to start blooming daily because I want to have more conversations with people on health and wellness. And so one lesson that I've learned, and I'm still learning more lessons as the days and weeks and months pass by, but one lesson I've learned in the over two year time period that I have been doing podcasting through Blooming Daily is that health conversations are easier said than done. We know this thing. It's a no-brainer. You can easily say things, but it's true. It's really true. You can say get more sleep. You can say eat well. You can say do X, Y, Z, but these conversations are just so much easier said than done. There are so many factors that in influence whether or not people can sleep well. There are so many factors that influence how people are eating. There's so many factors that influence if someone can go to the gym or if they have a park to go to or if they can stay factor. There's just so many factors that come into play and fit into the picture. And so that's one thing that podcasting has really made me think about. It has made me say, okay, beyond all these recommendations, what are the hindrances people are facing and why are they facing them? It's easy to just roll out advice or do this, do X, Y, Z, but then recognizing that people are going through different circumstances which can impact their health has been one really good lesson I have learned. Another lesson I have learned is that consist consistency is important but not easy. Again, 
it's something we all know but sometimes we can know something but not fully internalize them staying consistent with the podcast while having school work while working with the snma while working on campus and doing running clubs and all that has not been easy but it's important consistency is so important and continuing and running doing daily has really reinforced that in my mind that consistency is so important another lesson i have learned is that sometimes we gain things from activities that we don't necessarily see for example blooming daily i manage blooming daily's social media account or up to this point where we're recording this i manage blooming daily's social media account and i don't think about it but i didn't realize until recently a few weeks ago where when i got an opportunity to manage another social media account it was until then that i thought of how i have gained a lot of mastery with social media presence because of the podcast i mean even before i did blooming daily i was already managing social media pages for other organizations but still blooming daily i continued to hone that skill but i didn't really think of it and it's one of the benefits i've gotten from podcasting that social skill and that technical skill of being able to work with my team to put together designs and all of that but then manage the social media page and so this has really reminded me that sometimes we gain things from experiences that we don't really realize you know my public speaking skill has grown it has become better and more refined but it's something i really think about it's just something that has been happening over the years as i continued hosting blooming daily so sometimes we might be saying oh this particular opportunity i'm not really getting what i want out of it i'm not doing this i'm not doing that but then we forget that there are some hidden things that we are getting from the from that experience it might not be what we want exactly but it's often is something that is very important to us or something that is very crucial to our growth and well-being so that's another thing i have definitely learned and then the final thing i will say is that podcasting has reminded me that we need people we need people i don't work alone i have to give a shout out to blooming daily's brand designer promise who does a phenomenal job with um our designs with strategy and so i have other people who work with me to make sure that blooming daily is coming together i have to give an shout out to my brother steven who is always hopping on calls with me to speak about okay what should we do how should we do there's several people on campus kate nicholson who is the um who is an assistant director of wellness at Bowdoin. you know so many people come together to make dreams come alive and podcasting has reminded me that so um those are a few lessons i've learned that was that was my to be honest you know so so much with talking to students about the memories and the learning you know while you know appearing and hosting you know the podcast let me theory which is amazing stuff you know, because I, I want to hammer more about that word you men, mentioned, consistency. You know, in anything you do, to you, you, all the kinds of work you do, if you're doing it, you know, at the right time, showing up at the right time, strategically, being consistent at what you do, there's no way to lose. There's no way to lose. I mean, testing a bit. There is no way to lose once you keep showing up consistently. You know, you keep, you know, doing what you're doing rightly, strategically, you will never lose. And you talked about community, you know, working with, that's called Tim Play, which is an amazing, amazing strategy what people need to, you know, have as well, because you can't do without people. You have to work with people, you know, two heads are better than one. You know, one head is not better than two heads, you know, so, which is an amazing stuff. And I love the fact that you've learned some few things, you know, while, you know, hosting and appearing on that podcast, which, you know, is an amazing stuff. And if you are interested in, you know, helping on the podcast, listening to 
amazing ep episode. So the link is going to be on the you know YouTube description below. Do well to you know check out the you know the podcast. It's really really very inspiring. I've listened to most of them and. I must say it's, it's it's cool. You're doing a great job. Kudos to you. So um, the next yes. question for you. You're welcome. The next question for you is: How do you feel about your experience or your expertise at you know impacting the future of healthcare? What do you think? Could you explain that question a little bit more, please? What do you feel about the future of healthcare in terms of your experiences and your expertise, you know, in the future of healthcare? What do you think? So, if I get you correctly, are you asking what I feel my future in healthcare or my future future expertise in healthcare will look like? Yeah, with your okay. expertise right now. So, right now, I am building my skills and capacities to be able to show up to healthcare as a very seasoned and knowledgeable doctor. So, as I'm doing Blooming Daily, I'm having conversations about health and wellness and speaking with people and speaking about systems and communities. This is helping me build my knowledge bank to be able to become a doctor who can walk into the hospital with empathy, who can, a doctor who can see people and know that they have lives that impact their well-being. You know, they have lives that are impacting the things that I'm seeing on the paper. And so as I do my work with Blooming Daily, as I do my work with the Student National Medical Association, as I even do my work with Teen Nation, all of this is helping me become a person who is very vast in the field and who can pull from a range of things and say, oh, I think this person's job is affecting how they can show up. This person's family, this person's you know, community, this person's academic life, all the things I'm doing now are building the expertise that will help me become a more seasoned doctor. And I'm hoping that in a few years to come, I can help work with communities to provide good healthcare systems, good healthcare practices, good healthcare policies for whole communities, not just individual people. Because I think that catering to the healthcare of whole communities is very important in making sure that individual people are also well. Amazing, thank you so much for sharing that with us. You know, it's amazing to hear that you are getting prepared for the future you know mm -hmm. which you have to do and uh, so we have the last question for you so it's gonna be bold and college to watch this video you know so um so what are your advice would you you know give to bold and college students who wants to you know pursue leadership and contribute to their community what do you them? What do you, what do you advise them? Okay, that's a good question to wrap up with. The, my advice to both students who want to continue pursuing leadership in the community would be to start where you're at. Start where you're at. It might be it might be in the classroom during discussions, you know, it might be a club you really like, like Africa Alliance or any other club, public health club. It might be a small friend group. Just start where you at. You're you're at because then you're able to ascend well. And so sometimes we skip where we're at and we want to jump to bigger places, but we forget that we need to be trained with something smaller to be able to take on bigger roles. Because the bigger the roles, the bigger the responsibilities, the bigger the risks, the bigger the weight of of you know stress the bigger the just the, the bigger the everything essentially so really starting where your art is an advice i'll give and i'm not just even giving this advice for boarding students i'm giving this advice for everyone because starting where your art is a really important thing in ensuring that you're 
growing as a person and ensuring that you're able to become the leader that can really truly serve others and that can make an impact. Wow, wow. Thank you for dropping those amazing nuggets for not only for you know both students out there, but also to other math students, other people that are gonna come across this video as well. So growth is an amazing guest and I believe that the audience will really find this video really useful and um you you you're an amazing person, you know, and uh, so, with your friend Victory Yinka Banjo, both of you, yeah, you guys are really incredible. Like, very, very incredible. Victory is right. incredible. It's beyond the limits, like, really, really beyond the limits. And both of you are really incredible. Kudos to what you guys are doing. So, before we wrap up this session, what are your last words to the audience? I would say that's a good question. I think it's connected to what I said about start where you're at. But my last word would be to find the thing that drives you and start from there. Find the thing that makes you excited about the world, about making change, or about, about creating impact. Whatever it is for me, it was health and wellness. And that can be really hard. But pay attention to the things that draw you, to the spaces that draw you, to the places you feel like you're being called to make impact. And when you find those places, stay there. Understand how those things work. Look for how you can build capacity, build depth, and then find people who can help nurture you to be the person you want to be. But yes, find the thing that drives you, find the thing that makes you want to go out into the world and speak or and it doesn't have to be grand it doesn't have to be something huge or big it can be in your classroom in your in your religious institution wherever it is just find the things that that make your eyes light up and build on those things perfect I don't want to go more further. You know, you, you really touched everywhere, like really everywhere. So we've come to the end of the session. Um, kind of do to subscribe, share, and share because hopefully some of your network will really find this video very helpful. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.